always do there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. Star Wars always has these great master-apprentice relationships. Remember, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him. You see that handing down of mastery, the teaching, the developing, the growing. Do or do not. There is no try. It's very much the idea of apprenticeship. The need for those two groups to come together in order to pass down the knowledge and to help save the world in the case of Star Wars. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil does. Those life lessons are what make these characters some of the most iconic characters worldwide. The war is just beginning, and I will not be the last Jedi. All of that wisdom gets passed down, you know, over those generations. We have Qui-Gon Jinn, who's the master of Obi-Wan, who's the master of Anakin Skywalker. And by being trained by Anakin, Ahsoka was part of that legacy as well. Ahsoka is a character that Dave Filoni created and worked with George Lucas on in The Clone Wars. Originally, we didn't really know, you know exactly what The Clone Wars was going to be, and we made up our own little band of characters. There was a, a character that was a Jedi, and there was a Padawan, and thought, we'll put them on adventures. But, uh, you know, George had other ideas. <laughs> he says, well, and this character, and he points to the Padawan we had, and he says, let's give Anakin Skywalker a Padawan. And I was like, Anakin doesn't have a Padawan. And he just looked at me and said, Anakin has a Padawan. And that was basically it. That's how Ahsoka came about. We cast Ashley Eckstein to be the voice of the character. And she's fantastic in the Clone Wars and Rebels. Ahsoka is one of the most well-developed characters in Star Wars, period. She is the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. She is the only one that he is trained to be a Jedi. This young teenage girl who was trained to be a keeper of the peace had to become a warrior worthy of standing next to the greatest Jedi of all time. Ahsoka's story and her growth has mirrored my own. As you see my style of storytelling mature, it, the stories got more complex. It had grown to the point where I wanted to take what I was doing in animation and really see if I could get it to this type of storytelling that I'd grown up with in Star Wars. Mandalorian season one was a perfect place for me to experiment with my own creativity and style but have a great backstop and support from collaborating with all these other extraordinary people. You must reunite it with its own kind. This is the way. So when season two came around, I was like, for my episode, I was like, well, I'm gonna do Ahsoka. I'm like, I just need to try this. Let's do it. Ahsoka Tano, bo sent me. I hope it's about him. For a character that has such depth and complexity, to bring that character to live action made a tremendous amount of sense. Tell me what I want to know. Where is your master? George visited the set when we were filming the lightsaber fight in the Japanese Garden, season two. And I think it was really encouraging of Dave stepping up to this role. And so George would turn to Kathy and myself and be proud of Dave. He was Dave's teacher and Dave was his apprentice. There are moments when I just stare at her and she's like, wow, she just looks like this thing I've drawn, you know, but Sarah's done all the research. Like she knows the character, but now she has to become it in a way that's never happened before. Yeah, it actually, the, the thing that feels most awkward right now is talking 
with you. You know, the, the posing and, and, you know, sort of the, um, the stances we were doing, that's not unusual, but speaking as Rosario while in Ahsoka is a little startling. Um, I really love the transformation and really deep diving into who she is. Rosario Dawson is just such an incredibly powerful actress, and she loves this character. I think everything about who Ahsoka is has just brought to life in a way that almost nobody else could. She not only gets a character, but she gets like the Star Wars of it all, which is an important ingredient. You have to be in it. This is a hard thing. You're gonna have to be painted orange every day. You're gonna have to put a prosthetic on your head every day. You're gonna be training like a Jedi to learn how to lightsaber fight almost every day. I'm playing someone who is an absolute expert. And so I really wanted to be able to, to physicalize that as much as possible. Yeah, Jedi's primary weapon is a lightsaber. There need to be a lot of lightsaber fights. And they have to be good, because our fans know the difference. When I started getting my stances and some of the postures and you know started really getting my left hand up to par with my right, that I started to really feel like I was sinking into who Ahsoka was, because her physicality is such a huge part of who she is. No matter how tired I was, I was like, sign me up for some more, sign me up for some more. When you step into Star Wars and work with George, you are part of a legacy. You're part of a history, and we had to uphold that history and yet do this completely new and different thing. Ahsoka is another story where you can step in at any point and not feel that you necessarily have to have seen everything. From the beginning of this series, Ahsoka is out there on the fringe of the galaxy. When she hears whispers of this warlord's return, she decides to enlist her friend's help. This is about preventing another war. You know who could help? Sabine Wren. I'm not sure she'll want to help. I'm telling the story about this mentor-student relationship that passes from Anakin to Ahsoka to Sabine. There is nothing easy about being a Jedi. It's quite extraordinary to bring this to life. When the stakes are this high, we have to do what's right.